Hello everyone, my name is Raja Kadura and today I'll be presenting on the ethnic and racial disparities in colorectal cancer incidents. So some background information about me, I am a rising senior at Southside High School in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and I am a local research assistant at the University of Arkansas Fort Smith po uh, Biology Department in the Arkansas Colleges of Health Education Research Center. I am also the founder and president of our school-based ACT and SAT prep club, and I am a hospital volunteer. For my future, I plan on becoming a gastroenterologist and specializing in ERCP procedures. So today, I'll first be explaining what colorectal cancer is and where it arises and how it spreads. Then I'll delve into explaining the racial and ethnic disparities and the roots of these disparities. And finally, I'll call for action to be taken to promote racial and ethnic equality in healthcare, specifically in colorectal cancer prevention and detection. To begin, what exactly is colorectal cancer? Let's start with some statistics to paint the visualization of just how dangerous it is. As can be seen in this graph by the National Cancer Institute's SEER program, colorectal cancer is the fourth most common form of cancer in the U.S., with a staggering 152,810 estimated new cases in 2024, yet it is the second most prevalent cancer in terms of estimated deaths, with a shocking 53,010 estimated fatalities in 2024. Now, let's discuss where colorectal cancer arises. Colorectal cancer begins in two areas. Let's begin with the colon or large intestine. The colon consists of four main parts, the ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon. Colorectal cancer, or CRC, also occurs in the rectum, or anus, which can be seen right here. Now that we have a basic understanding of how common and deadly colorectal cancer is, along with where it stems, we can delve into how it occurs. CRC begins as a growth on the inner lining of the colon or rectum called a polyp. There are three main types of polyps, adenomatous, which sometimes change into cancer and are therefore titled a precancerous condition, hyperplastic and inflammatory polyps, which are not precancerous in general, and sessile serrated polyps and traditional serrated adenomas, which have a higher risk of changing into cancer. So how does colorectal cancer spread? Polyps grow into the wall of the colon or rectum over time. The wall is made up of many layers. Colorectal cancer starts in the innermost layer, or the mucosa, and can grow outward through some or all of the other layers, as in the picture below. When cancer cells are in the wall, they can then grow into blood vessels or lymph vessels, and from there, they can travel to nearby lymph nodes or to distant parts of the body. Now, let's move on to the racial and ethnic disparities of CRC. According to the National Censor Institute SEER program, the rate of new cases per 100,000 persons for males of all races is 41.8, while it is 32.0 for females. When looking into the diagram more closely, it is apparent that non-Hispanic American Indian and Alaska Natives have the high, males have the highest CRC rates at 53.6 per 100,000 people, over 10 out of 100,000 different from the average of all races. African American males are closely falling behind at a rate of 49.4 persons. The fallen flowchart demonstrates the hierarchy of colorectal cancer rates. And what's so interesting is that this flowchart while applying for males also applies for females, where American Indians are the most likely to uh, receive colorectal cancer, while Asian and Pacific Islanders are the least. Now you may be asking, why is this such a pressing global health issue? Well, global health is an area for study, research, and practice that plays a priority on improving health and achieving equity and health for all people worldwide. When we see such large racial and ethnic disparities in colorectal cancer incidence rates, it is evident that health equity is not achieved worldwide, and this is an issue that must be tackled. Now, where do these disparities arise from? The roots of these disparities come from genetic and environmental factors. According to the, an article from the New England Journal of Medicine, genetic factors account for 35% of CRC risk factors. Genetic factors of CRC include strong family history of CRC, which can be seen in this article from the National Center of Biotechnology Information, which showing the relative risk of people to receive um, colorectal cancer. As we can see here, there's a very large relative risk for patients with more than one relative with CRC. Additionally, a Harvard Health publishing article stated that recent studies suggest that differences in the epigenome differences of the right colon relative to the left colon among African Americans, compared with the pattern seen among whites, could explain racial differences in the sites at which CRCs originate. Additionally, differences in the gut microbiome have been increasingly implicated in the rising incidence of early onset CRC and may also contribute to higher CRC incidence in African Americans. 
Additionally, environmental factors play a very large role in colorectal cancer incidence. Colorectal cancer is preventable in up to 57.6% of the patients by lifestyle modifications, according to CA, a cancer for a cancer journal for clinicians, a flagship journal for the American Cancer Society. Some of the environmental factors include dietary habits, overweightness and obesity, physical inactivity, and alcohol and smoking. As seen by this graph right here, um, socioeconomic status, which is an environmental factor, is a very large relative risk for colorectal cancer. Additionally, personal history and family history are very large, but we can also see that um, other environmental factors, such as diet with high content of red meat and fats, um, for um, colon cancer and rectal cancer, as well as alcohol, smoking, sedentary behavior, and obesity have very large roles in fostering colorectal cancer. When looking at socioeconomic status, there is a trend that can be explained. The average household income by race and ethnicity is the highest for Asian Americans, the lowest for African Americans. Similarly, we can see a trend in incidence by race, where American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Black Americans are at the top of the highest incidence. Meanwhile, they have the lowest household income. Meanwhile, Asian Americans have the highest household income in the nation, while they have the lowest incidence rates of colorectal cancer. So some environmental factors impacting Native Americans and Pacific Islanders, according to an article by Russell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center, um, are that non-Hispanic American Indian and Alaska Native people have less access to health care, healthy food, and educational and employment activities. Since they live on reservations and tribal lands, sometimes it can be hard for them to find clinics and hospitals that are willing to screen them. Additionally, obesity is more common among non-Hispanic American Indians and Alaska Natives and adults than white adults. And American Indians and Alaska Native people are more likely to smoke cigarettes than members of any other racial or ethnic group in the U.S. Now, for some environmental factors impacting African Americans, which were found by Colorectal Surgery Associates at Kansas City for African Americans, the diet of many Black individuals includes more animal fat and less fiber. And animal fat is a very large risk factor for colorectal cancer, as we saw previously. Additionally, African Americans have higher tobacco-related illnesses, obesity, less physical activity, and lower intakes of vitamin C and E. Also, Black patients displayed a distinct pattern of mutations that may reflect environmental exposure seen in early onset colorectal cancer. Now, it is crucial that um, healthcare pro professionals and uh, global health professionals take action immediately to um, decrease the racial disparities and ethnic disparities found in colorectal cancer incidents. And this can be done by improving colonoscopy for screening access for people of lower socioeconomic status, establishing more healthcare centers near, near tribal lands and reservations, and making healthy foods more accessible to the general population. And these are my references. And I would like to thank the GLC for allowing me to present my family and teachers have continually inspired me to learn and supported me, and Dr. Haytham Aligani for giving me this opportunity to shadow him as his GI clinic and exposing me to the field. And most of all, I would like to thank you guys for taking the precious time out of your day to watch this presentation. Thank you. And these are my um, uh, contact information. Mm.